Hi everyone, welcome to Farm De Guru. In this video, we will discuss determination of dose and dosing intervals. Imagine you are at a hospital and there is a patient in the ward. Let's say the patient has been diagnosed with pneumonia. Now, you need to decide on a treatment plan. What treatment will you give? To create an effective dosage regimen, we need to answer these four essential questions. What medication should the patient take? How much should be taken per dose? How often should the medication be taken? How long should the medication be taken? Here's a simple example. Tablet paracetamol, 650 mg, twice daily, BD, for 7 days. Now, let's apply this to the pneumonia case. We know pneumonia is an infection, so we need to administer an antibiotic, right? By referring to literature or treatment guidelines, we learn that amoxicillin is an appropriate choice for this condition. With this, we've answered our first question, what medication to take? Next, we move to the second and third questions, what dose should be given and how often should it be administered? These questions form the basis of our topic, determination of dose and dosing intervals. Key points to remember, while calculating dose and dosing intervals, always calculate the dosing interval first, followed by the dose. This is an essential step, so keep it in mind. For any drug, this is the therapeutic window. The range between the minimum effective concentration, MSC, and the maximum safe concentration, MSC. Our primary goal is to maintain the steady state concentration of the drug within this therapeutic range. If you're unfamiliar with concepts like steady state concentration or average steady state concentration, we've explained these in detail in our previous video. Conversion from intravenous to oral dosing. Be sure to check it out. Now, let's proceed to discuss determination of dosing interval, followed by determination of dose. Let's discuss the determination of dosing intervals, which is essentially about how often a drug should be taken. A key point to remember is that the dose of a drug is always related to the frequency of its administration. To explain this better, let's compare to dosing regimens for the same drug, paracetamol. 250 mg every 3 hours, 500 mg every 6 hours. Here, you can clearly see that a smaller dose requires more frequent administration while a larger dose can be given less frequently. This demonstrates that drug dose is directly related to the dosing interval. Higher frequency means the drug needs to be taken more frequently. Now I want you to observe these parameters. Have you noticed any difference? Yes, it's the infinitive symbol. So what does it mean? Whenever you observe infinitive symbol above these pharmacokinetic parameters, it usually indicates that the value relates to steady state conditions. These are under normal conditions. These are under steady state conditions. For example, Cmax refers to the peak plasma concentration. Whereas, Cmax infinitive refers to the peak plasma concentration under steady state conditions. Here are some commonly used pharmacokinetic parameters with the infinity symbol. Now, Let's get back to our main topic. Dosing interval, tau. Dosing interval, tau, is calculated by using this formula. Here k is the elimination rate constant and tau is the dosing interval. We want to find out dosing interval. So we rearrange the formula like this, where ln represents the natural logarithm. Now we can find dosing interval by using this formula. If you want to know how the rearrangement happened, here is the step-by-step -step process. Important note, from this step, the negative sign in the formula vanishes. Why? The negative sign simply reflects the direction of the rate of decay. Nothing but how drug concentration decreases over time. It's not an absolute value. It just indicates that the drug concentration is declining. So we can remove the minus sign. Let's calculate dosing interval by using this formula. Suppose you have a drug with the following characteristics, desired MSC, is equal to 10 mg per liter. Desired MEC is equal to 2 mg per liter. Half-life is equal to 4 hours. And this is the formula. So, let's calculate. The desired maximum safe concentration, MSC, is essentially the same as Cmax, infinite, which represents the peak plasma concentration under steady state conditions. It is the upper limit of the therapeutic window. Similarly, the desired C minimum, corresponds to the minimum effective concentration, MEC, which is the lower limit of the therapeutic range. 
First step is to find K, which is elimination rate constant. We know K is equal to 0.693 divided by T half. Here T half is 4 hours. So we get K value. Now, second step, use the formula for dosing interval. Desired C max is nothing but C max infinitive, which is 10 milligrams per liter and same way. Desired C minimum is nothing but C minimum infinitive, which is 2 milligrams per liter. By applying to formula, we get a value like this. And from natural logarithm table, we get to know ln5 is equal to 1.609. So we get the final answer that is dosing interval, which is approximately 9.3 hours. Now, let's talk about determination of dose. Dose of a drug can be calculated by this formula. Since we are calculating dose, we isolate this D0 out of the equation and after rearrangement, the formula looks like this. Now, let's calculate the dose of a drug. Let's say we are designing a dosage regimen for a patient and these are the parameters we calculated. Remember, previously we discussed dosing interval should be calculated first and later dose because if we have dosing interval value in handy, we can easily calculate dose. Now we know all the values Let's plug them into the formula and we get the dose of a drug is equal to 416.67 milligrams and we know dosing interval tau is equal to 6 hours. Hence the conclusion is approximately 416.67 milligrams of drug every 6 hours should be given. Now see a patient case example. Patient a 50 year old man weighing 70 kilograms. So age 50 weight 70 kilograms. Condition Bacterial infection, example, pneumonia. Prescribed drug, amoxicillin, a common antibiotic. Our objective, design a dosage regimen to maintain therapeutic levels of amoxicillin in the blood to fight the infection effectively. Now, step 1. Gather key information about the drug like therapeutic range, half-life, volume of distribution, etc. In short, all the parameters in the formula. Step 2. Decide on steady state target concentration so, C max is 10 mg per liter and C minimum is 2 mg per liter. So, obviously, we aim for an average steady state concentration of 5 mg per liter. And it is inside the therapeutic window. Now, apply them to formula. First, rearrange the formula. Then, calculate the dosing interval, tau. This is the formula to calculate dosing interval, tau. Since we already know the tau, which is 6 hours, we can directly go to next step. Now apply them to formula and calculate the dose D0, which is approximately 307 mg every 6 hours. So our final dosage regimen is, the patient should take 307 mg of amoxicillin every 6 hours to maintain an average steady state concentration of 5 mg per liter in the blood. Practical considerations are, rounding the dose, amoxicillin is typically available in 250 mg and 500 mg capsules. In this case, we would round to 250 mg every 6 hours, which is slightly conservative but ensures the dose is safe. Adjustments for renal function. If the patient has kidney issues, the elimination of the drug might be slower, requiring dose adjustments. Key takeaway in this is, this example shows how we use patient-specific data like weight and drug properties like half-life, bioavailability, etc., to calculate the dose and dosing frequency. In practice, physicians and pharmacists adjust these calculations to ensure patient safety and efficacy. Thank you for watching.